Jerry Paxton for Gaming Shogun. Last year at E3, we spoke with Doug Lombardi of Valve Software about their upcoming zombie shooter, Left 4 Dead. A year later, we're back with him again, and we're talking about Left 4 Dead 2. How are you doing, Doug? I'm great. Good to see you again, Jerry. It's good to see you, too. So tell us a little bit about Left 4 Dead 2, what we can expect. So Left 4 Dead 2 is attempting to push you know, co-op gaming even further. Uh, with Left 4 Dead 1, we feel that... Uh, Pretty good about the fact that we hit our goal of making a co-op game that was uh, sort of infinitely replayable, if you will, or highly replayable at least. Uh, here at the show, we're talking to people that say, "Wow, I'm still playing the first game. I can't wait to play the sequel and stuff like that." So that tells us that we sort of hit that goal of, uh, you know, making something that was a replayable co-op game. And what we're trying to do now is take that to the next level by enhancing a lot of the things that made the game replayable, while also giving people lots more toys to play with, new characters, more story, and a bigger game in uh, delivering five campaigns versus four with all of them playable in versus mode, survival mode, and a fourth multiplayer mode that we haven't revealed details on out of the box on the day it's released. Very cool. Now, have there, I, I know a big uh, focus last year was uh, you talking about the director and the artificial intelligence which would shape the game depending on your skill. That's right. Have there been any upgrades to the director in the new game? Absolutely. We're introducing what we call AI Director 2.0 with Left 4 Dead 2. And in addition to being able to tailor the experience by uh, dynamically uh, spawning uh, uh, monsters, ammo, and weapons based on your performance and also for variety's sake, uh, the AI Director now has the tools to affect things in the world such as you play through a cemetery map, uh, in this campaign in the French Quarter called The Parish. Uh, and as you go through, uh, you know, the mausoleums, the first time there'll be a certain pathway to complete the cemetery. The next time you play it, the mausoleums will be laid out differently and the pathway will be set up differently. Uh, in, in the Swamp campaign, uh, you'll be going through, you know, water and it's mostly dark and whatnot. And if you're really mowing through the zombies and whatnot, the AI director has the ability to uh, bring on a southern downpour, which if you've been in the south can really impact visibility or you can roll in fog, which also affects visibility and will slow you down a bit more and make the challenge a little bit more as zombies come through the sort of haze of, of fog or rain. That's amazing. Now, um, are there any new zombie types to fight against? Are there any new weapons you can use? Anything? Yeah, absolutely. On the weapon side, there'll be over 20 new weapons in Left 4 Dead 2. Wow. Uh, we've gone through and touched all the firearms. So there's a sniper rifle, there's a new machine gun, there's a silencer on a submachine gun. Uh, we have incinerary ammo for bullets of fire, if you will, which are a lot of fun to burn up some zombies. Uh, but the biggest thing on the weapon side is uh, melee weapons. So we're introducing about 10 new uh, melee weapons that will be uh, the frying pan, the shotgun, chainsaw, the baseball bat, and obviously six others. And what's really fun about those is it allows for a different type of combat, obviously, but in close quarters in a game where you're playing with friends and friendly fire is switched on, a machine gun isn't always the best thing to have. Right. Uh, but in addition to that, it sort of helps reinforce that teamwork, that camaraderie. When you're in the middle of a frantic moment and somebody's pinned down by a boss zombie and everybody else is trying to clear the, the common zombies, if somebody comes marching out with a, with a frying pan and just starts donging people on the head with that thing, it you know causes this eruption of laughter across the team. And that you know laughter, just as being scared together, pulls you together together and winning together pulls you together laughing together I think pulls you together even more even more you know if you watch a great movie that's you know of comic value and you're sort of having the water cooler talk you know everybody sort of you know imitates the joke or recalls the joke and has that laugh together so it's a, it's a natural point of pulling people together on that step meanwhile on the monster side the creature side we're introducing three new uh, special infected uh, the charger is one that we're showing here at the show we'll introduce two more between now and uh, when the game launches the charger is basically sort of uh, this giant human ram or zombie-eyed ram and his goal is to pull people apart to separate the survivors uh, in a similar but different way than the smoker does. Um, he also has the ability to just pick you up and just clean knock you against the sidewalk until your brains have been beaten out. Nice. <laughs> um, I know that uh, there's been some talk about uh, the short release date between the last Left 4 Dead. Is, does this reflect a new um, development cycle, uh, view for Valve, and more yearly development cycle? No, Should we expect a third part next year? No, it's a, it, it's a case of, it's a special case of Left 4 Dead. Um, the team was, uh, came off the project with a head full of ideas for what to do next. Um, and then they got a lot more feedback once the game went out and was played among in the wild. And basically they sat down, did a whiteboard exercise, and put together a plan for the sequel and came in and pitched it to a bunch of us. And, you know, it seemed like a great idea. The AI director allows them to get a lot further, a lot quicker. Um, because of the procedural nature, they're able to get gameplay up and running really quickly. Um, and then add on top of it and, and create more variety by, you know, building upon that. When you're building a game like a Half-Life game, every moment is hand-stitched. 
when you're building a game like Left 4 Dead 2, you can employ the AI director to give you a baseline of play, and then you can start tailoring that experience and creating variety by adding a new monster. So you're sort of given this collection, this toolbox, if you will, and then you can say, okay, what do we want to add to the toolbox? How do we want to counter stuff? So we added the incinerary ammo, and we said, cool, we can light zombies on fire. And then we said, well, wouldn't it be cool if like, we had a zombie in a hazmat suit that was fire retardant, right? So you could throw your molotovs or your incinerary ammo and think everything's cool, and then all of a sudden a group of zombies come out in their hazmat suits, and that creates a variety. One of the things we're doing there as well is to sort of give each campaign its own flavor. Uh, the hazmat suit, for example, guy will only show up in the French Quarter. In the swamp, something else will appear that's unique to the swamp. Also, in terms of making each campaign more dynamic, we got a lot of feedback from people that said, I love the opening movie, it set up No Mercy really, really well, but then he just kind of dropped me into Death Toll and Dead Air and the other, the other campaigns. Uh, so this time around, we'll be setting up each campaign with its own intro cinematic to lead people into the uh, into that campaign and give more story that way. And it's important to not put too much story in the middle of a game that's supposed to be highly replayable because if you're going through this procedural world and then halfway through it you have to stop for three minutes for the scripted sequence it sort of lowers that suspension of disbelief that it actually is unique each time you play it. So we feel a more effective way to bring that to the table is through that opening cinematic. Awesome. Well I mean again thanks so much for talking to us about it. We're really looking forward to getting our hands on it. Here. Great let's play right uh, now. I have <laughs> one last question that my readers have been killing me to ask and I'd be remiss if I didn't. Any news on episode three? Not yet. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. Jerry Paxson for Gaming Shogun.